All right, you guys ready? Yay! All right. Um, okay, we'll go get started with our um, first roll. Go there. Mark on the floor. Yeah, I know. That's, um, it'll be okay. So let's, ready? You ready? Let's go. Okay, you're all set. Ready? Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to get into section 2.2. All right, and from section 2.2, if you guys remember, I wrote out those, uh, those list of questions. All right, and really what my main important goal, what I'm going to do, and it's going to be a little bit more interactive with you. I don't want to just go over how to show you how to do every single one of these problems. I can easily go and do that, um, but I've also created a lot of information for you to go back out and, and get extra practice uh, with them as well. So what we're going to do is I just want to kind of get into some discussions and I'm really going to go off of my questions that I developed for this class to go off on review. All right. Um, so the first thing though what I want to do is we first need to um, discuss about the polynomial. All right. And what I'm going to do ladies and gentlemen is I'm just going to give you a quick little reminder, because hopefully last year you guys discussed a little bit of polynomial. What I'm going to do is first give you the very, very um, scary definition of a polynomial. And then we're just going to kind of talk about a polynomial, and I'm going to get a little information from you. So first of all, you guys already have this written down. Let's write down the polynomial definition of a polynomial. All right, and these are going to be in part of your notes, which you're going to want to have. So. The definition of a polynomial, and it can be a polynomial equation or it can be a polynomial function, but we're just going to, and we'll just have the polynomial equation is going to write y equals a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus a sub uh, plus dot, 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 a sub 1 x to the 1 plus a to the 0. All right, write that down real quick. I know it's not going to make too much sense, but I'll try to help you out. Um, and now I'm going to start picking on some people. Ladies and gentlemen, it's OK if you're a little shy. All right? And it's OK if you don't feel like you're going to get the right answer. <laughs> but I just want to pick on some people, just get some answers so I can start getting a really a feel of where you're at. All right? And just kind of what you guys, you know, for those of you that were in Algebra 2 last year, or for those of you that came from other way, I just want to kind of get an idea. It's OK if you don't know the right answer or if you know the answer and it's, a wrong, and it's not the correct answer or the answer that I'm looking for. I just want to try to get some feedback. Um, so first of all, do you know an example of a non-polynomial? What would not what a polynomial would not be? It's okay, yes or no? No. Okay. Does anybody know a characteristic of a polynomial that we at least know that it has to contain for it to be a polynomial? Sides or angles. Sides or angles. I'm gonna keep it. Yes. Like on graphs it has to like I'd have like it's a line or Okay. Uh, it has to be continuous. Very good. Okay, I'll keep that. Sides, angles. Anybody else want to add in anything with the polynomial? No. OK. So ladies and gentlemen, you look at this, and this looks crazy, right? I still remember the first day that I saw this, and I tried to interpret and understand this, and it really didn't make any sense to me. OK? So that's OK if you look at this and you're like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Bergoglio. So let me go through a very basic polynomial, one that you're probably familiar with. Okay, that's a polynomial, right? That's a quadratic. And the quadratic produces a graph that we call a 
parabola, right? Otherwise known sometimes as a parabola. But yeah, it produces a parabola. So this is an example of a parabola. All right, now I'm going to talk about the x and the a's and all this kind of stuff in a second. But when you guys have a parabola, that's an example of a parabola. Now, going to what Kelsey said, that graph, does that graph stop anywhere? The parabola, does it stop anywhere? No, it shows, it shows that U shape, right? You guys remember the parabola? It has that U shape, and it doesn't stop. It goes, when you have the graph, like we know that there's this little point, which was the minimum and the vertex. You don't have to know that right now, but we have to remember that. But then we put these arrows on there because the arrows represented what? What do the arrows tell us? It keeps going on forever, right? Forever and forever, right? This is going to become very, very important for you guys to understand that, yes, it's, and it doesn't stop. There's no breakage. Now, you guys remember doing piecewise functions, right? Do you guys remember those? Remember the piecewise functions? You had something that looked like this. You're like, oh, done. Remember those? And you're like, oh, no. Now, do those, they do continue on, but are they connected? No, they're not connected. So you don't need to write this. I'm just kind of going on a tangent. But this is exactly correct, exactly what um, a polynomial. We're not going to go through in definition, But yes, this would be an example of a non-polynomial. All right, that is, you don't need to write that one down because we're just going there. But this piecewise function is not a polynomial because it's not connected. And even if it was connected, all right, it has a hole um, that's in it. All right, that's going to prevent it from being a continuous function. All right, so polynomials are continuous. So what Kelsey said is they go on and on and on forever, but there's no holes or breaks or anything. That's going to be a, con that's going to be a polynomial function. So they have to be continuous on their graph. All right. So this is an example of a polynomial. Um, I'll give you a non-example. And these might be, make you happy because we're not going to talk about them this year. Non-example. So for those of you that I know are in my class, we talked about these for in Algebra 2. But everybody else in Algebra 2 should have gone over these. But do you remember the name of these equations? No? Do you remember the name? Do you remember the name? Remember the name? Remember the name? Ava, do you remember the name? Say and remember the name? Yes? Asymptotes are part of these, right? And asymptotes are like what produce um, values that are not going to make them continuous, right? Do you guys remember, you remember graphing these, right? How you graphed them? They had those asymptotes. When they have asymptotes, they weren't connected, right? Or sometimes we found that there was an asymptote, but there was a hole. Did you guys have problems like that? Where you had, where you had now equations with a hole, so they weren't connected. So therefore, we know they weren't a polynomial. But does anybody remember, what do you, what do you, what's another name for a fraction? What kind of, what do we sometimes call fractions? Rhymes with passional or fashional. Rational. These are what we call rational equations. This is a rational equation. All right? A rational equation. That's what we're talking about. So, ladies and gentlemen, a non example would be rational equations. All right? Um, now, I don't want to get into too much of what a polynomial or what a, a polynomial is not. All I want you to know, though, is a polynomial all right, is going to be a sum of one or more monomials that is going to be continuous. OK? Were you coming to meet my period or just? Yeah. I just wanted you to get a physical book count. We're, I'm physically looking at books. Oh, oh you, how many books I have? And how many you need. I don't need any. You're done. For my thing, yep. You're done in both courses. Yes. Yep, I'm good on that. Thank you. And we're still meeting on second, right? Second is a B day. Oh, you want to do tomorrow B day? This is B day. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Where are you going to come? Are you gonna... period planning? I have fifth period planning today. today. Was that when you were going to come in? Yes. Okay, fifth period. No, sixth period. Sixth period. Yeah. Okay, you're coming in sixth period, right? Right, right at the beginning. Yes, okay. Okay, that's good. Okay. All right, so 
we have a polynomial. Um, you guys just remember a polynomial is going to be continuous. All right, you write this down. It's going to be continuous. All right, and it's going to be the sum of one or more monomials. And we're going to talk about this in a second. Okay, it's going to be continuous and the sum of one or more monomials. Now we have to go back and remember, oh man, what is a monomial? We have monomials, binomials, trinomials, uh, polynomials. What is all this stuff that we're going to have? Yep. One or more monomials. Yeah, you got bad handwriting there. I know. All right. So this has a sum, but you guys can see. So another thing is one thing, it has to, um, it has to be continuous. We know this is not continuous because this is going to produce either a whole or it's going to produce um, a uh, asymptote, right? So one kind of quick hint to understand, is it going to be um, one thing, it cannot be a monomial or a polynomial, is you can't have your variable in the denominator. All right. So if I did even something like this, that's now it's not a polynomial. All right. You cannot have a variable in the denominator. All right. Just a quick little I. I mean, if you guys want to write it down and remind yourself, you might come across a problem. But we're not going to be. I'm not going to try to ask you what's a polynomial and not a polynomial. But just a little FYI for you. All right. So now let's go and get into what we we need to know about this. All right. So I'm just going to erase this, but you guys can continue writing. So we go back to this part. All right. Now. What I want you guys to understand is I have n, n times 1, and this is going to keep on going smaller and smaller and smaller until it, gets to, until it gets to 1. And then technically, you could write x to the 0 here. Because what is x to the 0? 1. What is 1 times a to the 0? a to the 0. So we don't need to write x to the 0. But I want you guys to notice how this is going down. Right? n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4. And you keep on subtracting until you get to 1, and you keep on subtracting, and then you get to 0. So, but we don't need to write this here. All right. Kyle, do you know, so that n, what I'm representing is n is going to be my largest exponent, right? And then all the other exponents that are smaller go to the right of it as we write it down. right? You always write your largest exponent first. Kyle, do you remember what we call that largest exponent? No. Do you remember what we call the largest exponent? It is the maximum exponent. Yes, Adara? Very, very close. It's a part of the leading coefficient test. And the leading coefficient is going to be very close to it. But not exactly. You're very, very close. Very, very close. Is it the degree? It's the degree, yes. And the reason why I want to use degree, because we're going to go to the leading coefficient, which I'm going to ask next. But yes, this is what we're going to call the degree. All right. And then, so the degree, remember in Algebra 2, we asked you, you know, find the degree of the polynomial. And what you had to do is you had to rank them from highest to lowest exponents and then determine what was the largest exponent of your monomial. And the largest exponent of your monomial was the degree of the polynomial. And we're going to talk about why the degree is so important. So Adara, what is this number in front of my variable? So when my have variable has a number, that's what we call the degree. But if there is a coefficient, we call that the leading coefficient. All right, so these are very, 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 very important things to remember. Your leading coefficient and your degree. And you guys are going to be doing some problems with these and working on them. And I have a whole bunch of extra tutorial videos to help you guys out with all this. But all I want you guys to remember is the main important thing when we're talking about a polynomial, we know it's going to be continuous. It's not going to have a hole in it or a break. Okay? And it's going to go on and on forever. All right? On and on forever. So let's play a game. 
You guys like games? Yeah. All right. So, this is what we're going to call the end behavior game. All right, so ants. So what I created was an x and a y axis, all right? Now, a polynomial, you guys are familiar with the quadratic, right? Quadratic, the u-shaped one, probably. You did a lot in algebra, too. Um, and you're familiar with the line, right? Both a line and a parabola are polynomials. They both fall within our definition of a polynomial. Um, but you probably talked a little bit about cubics with you, um, but that was probably about it. You probably didn't get too far into there. So what I want to do is we're going to talk about end behavior. Does anybody raise your hand if you remember end behavior of a polynomial? Just you don't need to, I'm not going to pick on you. I just want to, if you just remember doing it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, nine. OK, 10, 11, 12, OK, good. So we got about half the class remembers it, half the class does not. So that's good. But you were talking, so now I want to ask you a question. <laughs> if I was going to graph a polynomial, all right, and I, I don't care. It, could, it doesn't matter what the polynomial looks like. We know that it's going to go on and on forever, right? So going on and on forever, um, I'd like you to give me one possibility. You know parabolas, like they rise both going up and going like up, go, up to the right, up to the left, right? And they also go, or they go down if it was the, the coefficient was negative. They go down to the left, down to the right. Could you give me an example of the end behavior of a polynomial? If it could go like up to the right, up to the left, where it'd go, or down left, down right? OK, so we'll just say, but um, I'm not, you're getting just a little bit ahead, because yes, you're correct. So, but you're saying that. If you have something positive, you're saying my end behavior could be positive going up and up, and then to the left up, right? And we know that could be a polynomial, right? I could graph a polynomial, and that'd be the end behavior, right? Is there another end behavior I could do? Is it, is it like when um, something is negative? It's, and like it's, I remember, like, if you line it up, like, it's going to be like, kind of. Yes, we are going to get into that. But if we have two end behaviors, what's another possibility from end behavior? I could have my end behavior both going up, or I could also have them what? Both going down. I haven't graphed the function. You guys notice I'm not graphing a quadratic, because this is not just pertaining to a quadratic. What else could I do? So they could both go up, both go down, or one going down, one going up. How about this one falls left, this one rises right, and then what else? There's one more possibility, yes? I mean, down to the, yeah. Perfect. OK. So the reason why I go through this, um, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm not graphing the polynomial because I'm going to ask you to find the end behavior of a polynomial of f, you know, y equals, let's see, 2, uh, what's one I'll do? 2x to the fifth minus 5x plus 7.5. All right, now yeah, you guys can graph that in your graphing calculator, and we'll talk about that. But do you really want to graph, you know, graph that and go through? There's a much easier way to determine this. All right, now you guys remember that this is very similar to parabolas, right? Right. These are the even. These came with. These could be parabolas. Well, the one important thing about parabolas is it was always x to the what power? What well, the degree was what? Squared, right? And squared is 2, and 2 is an even or odd number. Even. even. Well, guess what? I don't, it doesn't matter if it's x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth. Anytime you have an even, you guys are going to want to write this down, write down those four graphs. Anytime you have an even polynomial, I'm sorry, a polynomial with an even degree, the end behavior is going to be one of those two 
Um, one of those two uh, solutions or and behaviors, something around in there. Anytime it's even. So what, if I give you a problem, what's the first thing you're going to want to do? If it's even or odd, well, because obviously, if these two are even, then these other two have to be odd, odd right? There we go. Even, even, odd and odd. And let's see, I have, oh, wait a minute. Wow, we don't have much time, OK. We'll get this going. Sorry, it's going to be a little bit of talking for today. But I want to make sure we're at least on the same page. I don't want to be going too fast for you guys. All right. So even, even, odd, odd. And you guys notice I haven't graphed the function because it doesn't matter. It can be x to the 88th. And what x to the 88th is going to do? Rather than it looking like this, x to the 88th is probably going to be like blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't matter. Well, it can't overlap because it wouldn't be a function. But it doesn't matter what it does in between. All I'm asking, when I'm asking for m behavior, I'm just concerned with this. Where does the graph go to? Right? And we know polynomials continue on forever. right? No holes or breaks or jagged turns. Absolute value is not a polynomial. Um, all right, so now we're going to look at, so we know that the degree, if we can find the degree of the polynomial, determine if it's even or odd, that's going to tell you even, even, odd, odd. Now, do you remember which one makes, which one is, here's my leading coefficient, right? Now, what we want to do to determine on the leading coefficient is we don't care what that number is. We don't care if it's even. We don't care if it's odd. We don't care how big it is, how small it is. All we're going to care about if it is, do you remember? Positive, positive or negative. So if it's, uh, which one would this be if it's positive or negative? And you should remember that from quadratics, right? Because remember when a was negative, it went down. When a is positive, it goes up. So yes, that is when you're, sorry, I should probably write this in, even degree. So these are all when your degree is even, right? Even, even, odd, odd. So now, these are going to be when your LC, which I just call your leading coefficient. I don't like to write leading coefficient all the time. So I just write LC. Sounds like a cool nickname. This is when it's positive. So then if it's positive, the only other opportunity is it has to be negative. Then over here. This one might be a little tricky. See if you guys can remember. You got to try. That one is positive. You are correct. Now, how do you know that? Very good. Very good. Um, yeah, because a normal line has a degree of what? One is one odd or even. Odd, right? And a normal line looks like this, the identity function, which we call it. Right? It looks like that. Yes? That's y equals x. That's that equation has an exponent of 1. 1 is odd. Leading coefficient, positive, which is 1. Goes up like that. So yes, it's positive, so therefore this has to be negative. All right? So ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be your leading coefficient test. All I'd like you to do is just go ahead and determine. If you guys want to do one, you guys just want to check yourself, make sure you got it? Yes. Okay. Can I erase this because everybody has it on the board? Yeah. All right. Um, rather than doing anything in your groups right now, I'll just have you guys, I'll just give you two problems to do. And this is the easy review stuff. Then we'll get into the fun, hard stuff.
All right, so on the two examples that I stated, I gave you guys example number one says negative 4x to the fifth plus x cubed minus 2x squared plus 10. Then I gave you negative 1 fourth x squared plus 3 fifths x cubed plus 5 minus x. So just go and determine the LC. And you can write the leading, you can write the end behavior any way you want to. And I'm going to show you two different ways to write it and to talk about it. So if you want to work with somebody or see if you guys can remember, that's cool. Are you journaling? Oh, is that other notes? Oh, yeah. That's oh. Ooh, it's going to be a problem. OK. Oh, I'm going to rip them. OK. That's OK. That's OK. That's all right. I understand. Yes, yes, yes. Do it now. Anybody want to go up and put their answer up on the board? Under one? Ooh, ooh. That's one. Is there another student that'd like to go up and just be able to see how well they know it? Oh, okay. What's your question again? If we have the biggest degree, is that leading coefficient or is this leading coefficient? Your leading coefficient is going to be your leading coefficient is going to be the coefficient of your largest of your term with the largest degree. You're doing another example or example. Did you do one? Or you don't want to do it? So it's going to be a negative degree, and it's going to be right. So it's going to look like that. So you have a problem on how to write it. Wait, no, no, it's not like this one. No, it, it doesn't matter. We're we're not going to graph it. We're just going to talk about how to write it, which I'm going to go over, which I haven't talked about yet. I just want you to write whatever you know. Huh? Sure. That's fine. We're going to get a little bit more detailed though. I'll explain more in depth with you, okay? I'll explain. I thought it was the biggest, the one with the biggest degree. Your leading coefficient. Your leading coefficient is your coefficient of your leading term. Your leading term is the one that has the highest degree. All right. You guys good? I'm good. So we'll talk about it. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I kind of left this very open for you. Um, I know some of your teachers taught this maybe differently or told you how to write answers a little bit differently, and that's perfectly fine. That's why we're kind of going through this first day a little bit slower to make sure that we're all going to be on the same pace. All right. Um, 